Good morning, church. Welcome back to our daily devotions. This week we're going through the book of 2 John, and today we're going to be in verses 9 through 11 there. Uh, the last couple of days we've learned about truth and, and what truth does. John explains the truth of the gospel. He tells us that that truth leads to love and to fellowship and to joy when we see others walking it out and walk it out with each other. And yesterday we looked a little bit about how believers should respond to falsehood, to people who don't have that truth that he's talking about. So let's look at verses 9 through 11 this morning, and we'll see what John says about that as we get a little bit further into this idea about false teachers and what to do when we're confronted with false information about who Jesus is. Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, Do not receive him into your house, and do not give him a greeting. The one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. So John says anybody who goes too far and doesn't abide in the teaching doesn't have God. So that tells us something very clear, that you've got to have the abiding in the teaching of Christ. Now, there can be some interpretation issues there where some people think that means that means teaching about Christ, and some people think it means teaching that Christ did. But the reality is that it ought to be both, really. We have to abide both in what he said and did, what he taught, and in what's taught about him. That's why we have the Gospels. That's why we have those accounts so we know about Jesus. And because we also know from the whole Old Testament how it all points to Jesus. So there's all this teaching about Christ. And then we get the teaching of Christ that he does. And between the two, we have a a beautiful, glorious picture of God and his plan of salvation and and how we're supposed to respond to it. So he says, John says, anybody who doesn't abide in that teaching, he he doesn't have God. If he doesn't spend time in 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 thinking about that that teaching that Jesus did and the teaching about Jesus, then he doesn't have God. But conversely and beautifully, he says that the one who abides in the teaching, who does spend that time who does walk the walk that we were talking about yesterday, that he has both the Father and the Son. And of course, as Jesus says, I and the Father are one, are one God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Further, John says, if anyone comes to your house and, and doesn't bring this teaching, don't receive him. Don't let him in. Don't, give him, don't even say hi to him. Because if you do so, you're participating in his evil deeds. So John is saying, look, you've got to have teachers that, that bring the teaching. All right, that they are spending time in the word, um, that they bring the truth. They don't bring some falsehood or they don't bring only part of the truth, which is a real problem in, in today's church as we see a lot of people who will bring part of the truth about who Jesus is, but they won't bring the whole thing. That's what part of what John was talking about in yesterday's verses where he talked about how some people uh, refuse to believe that Jesus had a physical body. Today we have people who refuse to believe that Jesus was also God and so on. So we have lots of people who bring a partial truth of who Jesus is. But John says, look, somebody's going to come and bring you the full teaching. Not too far and not, not far enough. The full teaching of Jesus and nothing else. The truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? That's what we're after. John is all about the truth. So it, for us, it's worth spending time. It, it's worth abiding in that teaching so that we will know, so that we are welcomed into each other's homes, yes, for hospitality, but also because we are welcomed into this fellowship. Because we all know the truth and we all share that truth together. So we have responsibility too when, when we're confronted with false teaching to, to dismiss that falsehood and to um, have fellowship only with those who know the truth. Which doesn't mean that we don't have friends, right, who don't know Jesus yet because obviously we have the mission of sharing the gospel. But he's talking about false teachers. When people intentionally or even unintentionally, when they, when they are sharing falsehoods about who Jesus is, we have got to confront that. We can't have fellowship with people who lie about who God is. We can't have fellowship because as John tells us in 1 John and in his gospel and at the start of this letter, he says that that fellowship is based on truth. And because of truth, we have fellowship and love. And so we can't have Christian fellowship with people who lie about who Jesus is. It's very clear. So John says, don't participate even by by proxy (laughs) with them. 
you know, don't, you know, this is kind of the, the shake the dust off your, your sandals and move on to the next town kind of approach. <clears throat> but, but our responsibility in this in the end is not just to reject falsehood, that's important, but to abide in the teaching so that we are not spreading falsehoods. We have to spend time in the word and in prayer and under teaching and with each other and in, and, and communing with the Holy Spirit to understand the word so that we will know what is true, both so that we'll recognize falsehoods and so that people will recognize truth in us. And we have to be prepared to speak up, but mostly we have to be prepared. We have to work at it. We have to abide in the teaching. <clears throat> we don't want to condemn unnecessarily. We want to clarify repeatedly and perfectly because of the word. So we compare teaching to the word. We understand it better and we abide in that so that we can spread what is true so that others who are excited about spreading what's not true will not kind of win over the day. Okay, we got to spread truth clearly. Let's pray about that a little bit. Father, we thank you that you have given us truth, that we know what the truth is so that we can spread it, so that we can share it, not just with other believers, God, but with an unbelieving world that needs to know who you are and that is being confronted from all sides with falsehoods about who you are that are not true. So God, may you help the true gospel go out for your faithful church so that the world would know who you are and that all you have called would come to you and give you all the glory and worship that you truly and richly deserve. We love you, Lord. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me this morning, church. Come back tomorrow morning. We're going to finish up 2 John by looking at the last couple of verses. We'll see you then.